Clean progression with our guys coming in as freshmen, uh, kind of what we're looking for, how we take them through our teaching progression. We take them very slow. We got no, we're in no hurry to get to a catch position. Uh, but we just want to, we want to take them very slowly. We go a little different than most. We go bottom up. We don't go top down. Uh, we think in terms of sequential teaching in a sense. So we want to teach our guys how to pull from the floor, and then we're going to work our way up. Um, first thing we do, just like anything else, we want to teach them how to approach the bar. So we tell our guys everything needs to be relatable to something that they know already, in our opinion. So uh, we teach them, we tell them just put their foot in a vertical jump position. So we don't want to be in a wide squat position. We don't want to be too close in here. We tell them, think about, you're about to do a vertical jump. How are you most comfortable doing a vertical jump? Usually that's going to be right underneath your armpits. So we want their shins right up against the bar. You guys all know this. I'm just telling you cues that we give them to kind of help them relate and remember. We want the bar just over the shoelaces. They can't forget that. That's pretty easy. As a good starting position, we want their hands just outside their shins. If it's a longer, broader guy, then we'll let him move out a little bit as we go. But as a general rule, we want just outside the shins. We tell them to think about starting pushing through the heels. It's very simple. Don't, we don't really get into a lot of midfoot stuff or anything. Again, we got to keep it simple with those guys because we want them to be able to retain it and apply it and actually care about it, okay? So approaching the bar, we don't want them to bend over and grab the bar. So the first thing we do is we tell them to squat down and grab the bar from that position, okay? And we'll just work that. We'll have a bar sitting there. We'll say, all right, approach the bar and we'll make them tell us, all right, where does the bar need to be? Just above my shoelaces, okay? Where do my shins need to be? Up against the bar, where do my hands need to be? Just outside my shins. So we make them repeat it, that way we know that they know it, okay? We want to squat down, grab that bar, and we'll stay in this position. We'll hold guys in this position for 20 seconds just to make sure that they understand what we're talking about. We want a good flat back, we tell them chest higher than the hips, hips higher than the knees, okay? If you don't tell them that, then they're going to be right here, all right? And they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Chest higher than the hips, hips higher than the knees. We tell them we don't really teach a hook grip, just like everything in our program. We want to keep it simple. We want to keep it consistent. So we go ahead and tell them to wrap their thumb around the bar because that's what we do in everything that we do in our program. That's a base fundamental safety principle that we teach our guys when they come in is wrap your thumb around the bar. So we keep that consistent throughout everything that we do. So squat down, thumb around the bar. And this is our starting position, okay? Guys are right here, their heels are starting to elevate, and we'll adjust. We'll throw a bumper underneath the bar so that they can pull themselves down in that position. Most guys that we get, fortunately, are pretty mobile guys, and they can get in that position. Inevitably, we're gonna have a few that don't bend so well, so we'll just throw a bumper underneath the plates there, okay? So our starting position's established. First thing on our power hour test, we told them, We'll ask them again, what's the first thing we do before we do anything in our program? And they'll say, set the core, good. Okay, so approach the bar, set the core. They understand what setting the core means because we've shown them and we have repeated it until they are tired of hearing it, okay? From there, something that we added this past summer, we used to go straight into a deadlift, but Tony Smith actually just reminded me we added this summer, is we're gonna lift that bar just to knee level. Right there, we're gonna go just to about knee level, okay? <laughs> Inevitably, when you do that, you're gonna see some guys do this. That's the first thing you're gonna do. They're gonna unlock the knees, they're gonna drive their butt straight up, okay? So that's an area of emphasis. We just wanna drive to knee level, okay? From there, if we feel good about it, we're gonna go into a deadlift, okay? And just to keep it simple for them, we are going to have them go ahead and extend their hips and knees just to go ahead and get used to that movement. Okay, now we will get a little more technical as we go with them, but we want them to go straight into a deadlift, okay? Again, reminding them to keep their shoulders packed in, elbows out, driving through the heels. When we feel good about that, we're gonna go into a clean pull, just a basic shrug movement, okay? We're teaching them triple extension, ankle, knee, and hip. Right there, okay? Pushing through there, inevitably what they're gonna do as you get into this movement is they're gonna go like that, okay? Again, we use that graphic. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. You throw the bar out, it's gonna throw your body back. You wanna apply force to the ground, send the bar up, okay? So, we've established our deadlift, we've established our clean pull, and I should say the two cues we use, we actually stole this from Joe Ken, 
Love it. Push, jump, and punch. That's our three cues that we use. I'm sure you guys have heard that before. But we've established pushing through the floor. Now we're getting into the jump, okay? We've established what triple extension looks like. Now we just want to add a jump shrug to it. Right there, vertical. Again, cues, things to be looking for inevitably. As they get in this jump position, if they fire out, they're gonna jump back. Or they're gonna get right here, they're gonna fire the bar out, and their feet are gonna do that. We don't want that. These guys have seen Olympic lifters and they've heard their feet smack, so they've been taught, or they have taught themselves, that they need to go, we don't want that, okay? So, we have established our deadlift, we've established triple extension, we've established jump shrug. I hope no red flags go off, but then we go into a high pull. I know not many people like that, but it's what we go into next. <sighs> high pull, okay? Something to look for on the high pull. For some reason, guys naturally get into that high pull motion, and what do they want to do with their feet? Okay, we don't want that. We want to stay in a good athletic position. We've established coming up through the ankle, through the knee, through the hip. We've deadlifted, we've clean pulled, we've jump shrugged, we've high pulled. Now we're ready to catch in a power position. Keep in mind this whole time, they've been front squat. We teach them how to front squat the day they step on campus. Okay, we start with a kettlebell, we go goblet, then we're gonna progress to a bar. If a guy doesn't have the wrist, elbow, lat, flexibility to be able to get in that position, we'll go bodybuilder, we'll progress to straps on the bar, then we'll progress to a catch, okay? But basically, we're just going into a power lifting, I mean a uh, power clean movement. Catch it, power position, stand up, drop, okay? To incorporate a little tempo from there, we'll do a whistle command, three whistle command. First whistle, clean, Second whistle, stand up. Third whistle, drop. Easy way to get some tempo, okay? When we feel good that we've mastered the power clean, then we'll go into a full hand clean. By this point, guys have been doing mobility work with us. They've been squatting. We feel good about their ankles. We feel good about their knees. We feel good about their hips, okay? So we'll go hand clean into a full squat right here. We typically go just above the knee, Again, we're teaching them the hand clean. I mean, we, you've, got, you've got a base established with them already because all we gotta do is tell them, okay, push to just above the knee, there's your hand clean position, okay? So we've mastered the push. Now, we're just gonna focus on the jump into a full catch. Right there, and drive up out. Again, one tempo work, three whistle command. First whistle, catch. Second whistle, drive up out. Third whistle, drop it. It's the way we get some tempo work. From there, we feel comfortable that guys can full clean. We'll go power clean. Well, actually, we'll go a full clean from the floor. Right here, and drive up out. Again, we've established push. We've established jump. We've established punch, okay? Now, that was like two minutes. This is over the course of weeks and months. At Power Hour Group, we start with ground zero. We may have some guys in that group that deadlift for a month until they get good at it. We may have some guys that don't ever uh, get out of the power clean phase because they go to do a full catch and they're, they're right here, okay? So we're just gonna catch in that power position. We may have guys that have to clean pull or high pull because they're, they're right here. Okay, that's not safe. It's not a safe position for their upper arm or for their lower arm. Okay, so um, some adjustments we make. Like I said, putting bumpers under. We had a kid, we have a kid, his mobility's gotten much better. But if he went to approach a bar right now, he'd be right here. Okay, so simple solution with that kid, he can't bend just yet. He can't get under that bar just yet. No problem. Right here. Now he's in a good position. From the floor, he's right here. Right here, he's in a good position, okay? It's basically just like cleaning off blocks. We just don't want blocks. We wanted to 
just do it a simple way, okay? Other areas to look at, some guys have trouble catching, okay? You guys have all experienced that, okay? Something that we throw in with one of our dynamic warm-ups is just a basic wrist stretch. We'll do some hip activation with our guys that may be fire hydrants, that may be donkey kicks, whatever the case. We're gonna hang out in there for a little while. We're just gonna do some wrist stretching. May take 15 seconds, may take 20. We're just gonna open those guys up, okay? In between sets, you'll see guys all the time up on boxes, up on benches, opening their wrists up. Something great that we got from Brandon Horgan at, uh, at Wick Forest. He'll throw a band, anchor a band to the bottom of the rack, throw it right here on the fingers. The guys will hang out 15 seconds. Switch it, hang out 15 seconds. That's a rack position. Easy way to throw in some mobility work for those guys. A lot of times, not being able to catch is derived. It starts in the lat, starts in the back. So we'll just, I don't see a PVC in here, but. I got a new one. No, so I'll just. So basically we'll just do a little T-spine mobility work. Have a PVC in the hands, right here. We're just working, opening that lat up. Coming down a little bit farther each time, okay? Some guys really thick in the front delt pec region. They get right here and they just can't quite catch it, okay? We got TRX straps hanging here. We'll take a TRX, one hand here, one hand here. We'll just walk it out, <coughs> a little pec stretch. If you wanna get a little bicep, a little forearm in with it, kinda let your fingers ride back on it. You'll feel it all the way down through there, okay? And that kinda opens those guys up and we can get in to some better clean work with those guys once we feel good about their mobility. We're not gonna put them in a bad position. We're not gonna, uh, we're not gonna put them in a disadvantageous position and get them hurt just so that we can clean because it's our foundation. It is our foundation, but we wanna make sure we do it in a safe way. Same thing, if you got a freshman in high school and he doesn't have a great strength base yet, you're probably not gonna put him up one-on-one -on -one against one of your seniors who's a big dude and gonna hurt him, okay? Same thing in the weight room. You're not gonna, we're not gonna force a heavy clean or force a catch on a clean until the guy proves he can do it. Now, we will have some guys that are catching kind of right in here. That's not gonna be with super heavy weight until we feel confident that they can catch it. Those guys are gonna clean pull, they're gonna high pull, uh, we're gonna make those necessary adjustments. But that's some of the main things that we do. That's our clean progression. We start with a deadlift to the knee, which we incorporated this past summer. And we go to a full deadlift, okay? And we're gonna go to our clean pull, and we're gonna go to our jump shrug, and we're gonna go to our high pull. We're gonna catch it in a power position. We're gonna hang clean into a full catch, and then we're gonna power clean into a full, we're gonna pull from the floor into a full catch. So that's kind of our progression. A little bit unorthodox to what a lot of people do. A lot of people are top down, we're bottom up. You just feel like our, our guys learn better that way. And as coaches, you know, that's what we're, that's what we're called to do. That's what we're supposed to do. I think John Wooden said, they haven't learned, they, you haven't taught until they've learned, right? So we got to find the way that our athletes learn best. And that's what we found is that our athletes learn best when, when things are sequenced and when we can pull from, uh, from ideas and, and things that we've already taught them that are already established. Uh, any questions on that? on our clean progression or anything we do to make sure they can catch clean.